Guys, just want to throw up another quick tech tip uh, on turbochargers. Now, I just want to give you some basics for the guy who doesn't have a lot of time, but just want to understand things just a tad bit better. And this one actually that we're working with today, um, you know, it's water cooled and oil cooled, so kind of a handy setup here. So to to be able to get a lot of more uh, coverage here. So uh, now essentially, what I've got here is a GT3582. Uh, it's a T3 turbo. It's got AR 0.763, um, and essentially we've got uh, one of your smaller turbos. This is what you would typically see on a four-cylinder engine. Um, now you can use them for you know your um, larger applications, especially if you're going to be um, doing a um, you know twin setup. So you got one on each side, then, then that's a different story. But what I wanted to cover really was just uh, some, some of the more uh, relevant stuff. Uh, now on the turbos themselves, they are uh, specific as far as, you know, which direction they are. Now you need to clock them sometimes. So that way the centers are actually going correctly. Um, the bottom side here is uh, a different fitting and that is always going to be in the, well, I shouldn't say always, they do change stuff, but that's a, you know, a fitting that basically needs to have a pretty large orifice. Uh, that's your drain for your oil. Uh, just about every turbo I know wants a 10, a dash 10. So something five eighths or, you know, bigger if you can. Um, the top side sometimes has a fitting like this, but most of the time, you end up with one of these guys. Now, what happens is, is you just screw this guy into the top here, and that's an A-in fitting right there, so your A-in fitting goes straight from your hose to your oil pump, or it crosses over where you're attaching to your other turbo and then down to the oil pump. Um, now, each turbo is gonna be different, but they have a hole through them, These, uh, this fitting specifically, uh, and uh, your restrictor essentially is what they're called now here's the here's the problem with information online and with suppliers and turbos they're all different uh in, in majority roles i mean there are some commons between them but not all of them the you got hybrid bearings you got ball bearing turbos some people say 040 some people say you know 035 uh some say zero <laughs> meaning you have full uh, flow, um, you know, you really got to just get with the people that make the, the turbos and get those answers from them. Unfortunately, Amazon guys, eBay guys, a lot of these overseas guys, they aren't answering. They will not actually answer you. So you got to depend on forums or maybe they let somebody left reviews. Um, then you got weird fitting, uh, you know, uh, placement issues. And things like that. So, I mean, it can get pretty much to be a pain. It really can be sometimes. So, experience and diligence is the only way to get through that. But, all right. So, essentially, you have your one fitting here. So, your A is going to come over here and land here. And then it drains out here. Now, by the time it passes through uh, from the top to the bottom, it gets foamy. So, essentially, that's why you want that really big. So that way it, it's got a huge orifice to go through. And then um, going into your, you know, in, in my case with the LS motors, we will go to the front timing cover or back to the oil pan uh, somewhere at the top uh, edge. So that way we're not in the pressure zone. Um, but logically speaking, uh, you know, in here is going to have your restrictor. And then you want a 90 out and, and go to run. Now, if you have the space and it will look clean, you don't have to go 90, but a lot of them do. And then, of course, you got your water in and out. Um, as far as I know, it's not very specific on directional. Yet, yeah, granted, you had the rotation of the uh, turbine there, so you kind of want to go in the flow of that. So, unfortunately, now, when you go to mount these guys, as you can see... With the header spinning up here, and this one's spinning down. And, and that's because, you know, when you buy these, they're like very uh, sighted there. So now you can rotate these guys, which is called clocking them. 
Um, I've loosened all these bolts up here, loosened all these bolts up here, and I can grab this guy. Now this piece right here also moves by itself, so you don't have to go with just one. So when you get this into the position, I'm just going to give it a little slight turn so we can shoot down through that hole and then give her a, a couple of tightens. Very simply, go all the way around. Make sure you get everything in uh, a tightened position again. Uh, there again, you got to follow the uh, torque specs for this stuff. And then you can take and also clock this one. So this one will move on its own too, as you can see. Now, into whatever position you need it. Now, the biggest thing to remember is don't try to yank on these things until you actually get them really loose. There are seals in there, gaskets you know, O-rings and things like that that could possibly get damaged if you're, you know, forcing it around without, uh, you know, it being loosened enough to move freely on its own. Now, on the turbo itself, you have your exhaust comes in, it comes through here, spins this guy, and then exit out here. Now, this exit can be different for all sorts of different turbos. Uh, this is how this one works for me. And then at that point, you know, you want to expel your, your gases here. Now, it spins this shaft through the center here, which is why the oil and all that stuff is there. And then it basically, hang on, makes this guy clock. So it's sitting here and it's turning here. And that creates a vacuum. So we got air literally being sucked into here. And then it spins around through here and goes out the hole up here. Now, this is where you, um, if in low applications, you can just go straight to the engine. Uh, but a lot of people want to use this and go to your intercooler. And this is basically a giant thick radiator. Mine's covered currently because when you're welding around and stuff, you don't want to mess uh, your, your parts up. Uh, if you want to see uh, fabrication and relevance to that kind of stuff, just check out my other tech tips. So, but anyway, so you wanna have a filtered way to go to that, you can put a boot right directly on it, or you basically bring piping down and around to, to where it can capture some cold air off the bottom of the car. Uh, and we got cold air coming through here, and then I've got an actual opening right here that we're gonna put a nice grill on to give extra airflow. One of many little headaches that uh, just about all the Corvettes have. Hopefully the brand new ones do a lot better with that stuff. But anyways, so air in here, air out here, goes into here, cools off, and then goes out of this into the engine. And essentially its biggest job is to take all this free energy that's being shot out of the exhaust to basically turn it into a... Uh, motor almost I guess you could say because it's spinning really fast the exhaust uh, is basically forcing this to turn which you're basically expelling uh, exhaust into the uh, atmosphere freely and it's converting it to a vacuum right here that's sucking air in and forcing the air into the engine and that's what they refer to as boost so we're taking basically and using free energy to give us more energy. So now there are other parts of this guy. There are waste gates, there are blow off valves, uh, and those come in for the safeties to, to stop you from basically over boosting, uh, basically making it uh, spin too fast for the engine. Um, and ex you basically dial uh, how much uh, you want the actual engine to get out of it too. So with these different combinations of things, uh, all that will help you uh, maintain your turbo better, help your turbo uh, a lot uh, to last longer and, uh, you know, basically uh, stay in good shape. This guy right here is for a manual or electronic boost controller. Now, a boost controller's biggest job is to literally uh, limit how much boost pressure this turbo is going to take. So you can have a manual where just literally little knobs, simple thing. You just sit there and spin it and 
until uh, you know basically your water fountain. You just spin it until you basically allow the exact amount of water you want to come out. Essentially, that's what a boost controller is. It's doing exactly that. So think of a garden hose. You're just spinning that boost controller down or up. So boost flow, boost levels down, boost levels up, meaning water flow down, water flow up. Okay. Now you typically want to have your waste gates and your, um, all right. So as I was saying, um, your turbo waste gates and your blow up valves. Now your waste gate is on the exhaust side. Uh, so your hot side and your blow up valves are on the cool side right before your, uh, engine or, um, basically right before you get to your map sensor stuff like that most of the time. Now, essentially these guys are your waste gates so that your wasted exhaust fumes. Uh, you want these guys to not be at a 90 degree. So imagine if you got a hose and you tee it off, uh, a Y T would create better flow equally to both sides. Same thing goes for these guys. So if you're installing these guys on a manifold, in this case, you know, the flows this way and then it kicks hard here. A lot of guys really want them on the turbo somewhere on this, but welding into this cast is uh, not an easy task. But if you have right here, you have a good 90, you can throw it into that 90 in that turn right before it gets to the turbo and you're going to create the same dynamics. So it'll, it'll release just as well. And then some guys, uh, the bottom basically here is where the exhaust flows against and that opens and closes like a valve in an engine head. And uh, that allows, uh, you know, so much pressure to be relieved so that way you don't over boost. Or, um, now on this guy, some guys just have that Excel right there at the, uh, the ground or the engine or whatever, you know, just, uh, you know, spits it right out. Uh, they like the sound of that. Uh, what, uh, you know, some of the more other applications, they'll have it spit out from over here and then go straight into the exhaust part of the system uh, after this turbo. So it quiets everything back down and continues. So, again, at your wastegate, your uh, Sorry, let me get this out of the package so you can actually see it better. And this is your blow-off valve. Uh, yeah, these are your inexpensive styles. I mean, there's so many things out there. If you know how to rework these guys and work on them uh, and, and clean up the little imperfections, they work perfectly fine. Um, but anyway, so these guys will be on this side of things. So it, right here at the uh, before uh, the uh, intake of the uh, engine. So, And it, again, is uh, going to basically allow... Uh, excessive uh, pressures off so that way you're not over boosting uh, your engine itself so all in all you have multiple different ways of controlling these you've got you know uh, manual ways and that works great I mean guys are pushing you know high horsepower out there with just a standard little valve a manual valve nothing fancy like I said like kind of like a hose uh, nozzle um, and then they've got all sorts of wonderful um, ways to electronically control that you can control it you can allow more boost between shifting and gears you can allow more boost uh at the top end or low end uh very specific rpms or you know maybe you're going to throw in some nitrous oxide or methanol injection system uh, you know you can change when you want it to at very specific times so those can get very complicated and obviously very expensive but on a generalized setup, it's something simple. You can just have a, a control a valve right here that goes straight to your, your wastegate. And that valve can also, you know, run between here and uh, your blow off valve, uh, you know, to each one, basically. Controlling how much they open and close. Um, as far as uh, the, the turbo itself, they're really simple as long as you get it, keep them oiled, you keep them cooled. And most importantly, it's so cheap to have them, you can have a turbo timer. And what that is, is, you know, most times it's $30, $40 timer that stops you from just turning your engine off every time you stop. 
you throw this turbo timer in there, you turn your engine off, and it keeps your vehicle idling for like five minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, I believe you can adjust that uh, right off the top of my head. Uh, each one's different, so it just depends. So, but that allows the engine to run a little bit longer, get the temperatures down, and get the oil cooled down and allow the turbos to physically cool down. And they're for preventing long-term damage and quick damage to uh, your parts. So having a turbo timer on there is always a positive. Um, other ways you could uh, achieve the same thing without actually having your car running while you're away from it. Um, if you have a water-cooled one, you can install a uh, electric water pump. Uh, the whole system can shut down, the engine can shut down, and then that water pump can sit in there and continuously move water through it. So, there we go. Well, again, I just uh, don't want to make this crazy long, but I did want to kind of cover uh, a few things and, you know, give you some generals here. Tons of videos out there like this, yes, but I do uh, want to basically try to to make sense of something on a pretty quick level here. So I hope that was helpful for you guys, uh, especially you beginners. I know you guys that have been playing with these turbos for a long time. It wasn't for you, obviously. All right, man. And girls, sorry. I'm Jeremy. This is Chaos Garage. I appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and throw me some comments. I will try to add footage on stuff. I'll keep me a list going here. So have a good day, evening, night, morning.